Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nirsh Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of this tutorial, we will be continuing ahead with our checkpoints where we'll be talking about the text checkpoint as well as the text output value. Just like standard uh, checkpoint and output value as it works for any object, multiple properties at the same time to be verified, the text checkpoint is limited to a particular text box itself. That means one particular object can be verified for one property, which is text at a time. So these are actually the broken up part of the standard checkpoint, where standard checkpoint can do multiple things at the same time. These other checkpoints are standalone for each purposes. So let's get started and understand how the text checkpoint and the text output value can be used in our UFD to add more value. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be moving ahead with checkpoints and getting into understanding of what is text checkpoint and what is text output value. In our previous tutorial, we have worked on the standard checkpoint where we can actually check any object's multiple property at the same time. Whereas standard checkpoint is also called as a universal checkpoint which can be applied on any type of object. But when it comes to text checkpoint, we can only target the text area or the text boxes which contains a text value to be exported or verified at the runtime. In order to do the same job, all you need to do is again get into the recording mode with the application which you want to work and definitely try to add a text checkpoint for any particular box which contains a text. So let me just quickly log into the system and try using the same and show you how to make use of the text checkpoint as well as the text output value. Now in order to add a text checkpoint, you can just click on the record button and be in the recording mode. Just go ahead by entering some value here, for example, drop down and select uh, Portland. And uh, you go to the checkpoints, here you will find the two options, text checkpoint, text output value. Let's try with the text checkpoint right now and select the object for which you want to capture the text checkpoint. Now that's the WPF combo box from City and press OK, which will add the checkpoint step here and include the same. Well, it's just taking a moment. Yes, it's confirming that is this your expected value? I can also change the expected value right here. It's not really mandatory that what you capture in the application should be always the expected value. Sometimes we just capture the object using this mode and at the time of adding the step, we can always change the expected value, something like this. And I can also play around with these expectations. For example, match the case, if it is uppercase or lowercase or proper case, exact match, partial match, ignore any spaces if there are text not displayed to be confirmed, if the text is not displayed on the screen. And I can just say, okay with that. Now this will add a step for this and now if I want I can stop recording. But before that I can also highlight to you that this is not limited to any of the active boxes or combo box or text box but in fact, in fact if you want you can check the title of the page, you want you can check the status text which is book flight, search order and all sort of things. So let's try adding one more extra step to see and confirm that can I check a static object from the application. So click on text checkpoint and click on book flight. You will have WPF tab strip and this WPF tab strip contains some information which will again be popped up. Yes, there's a complex value as there are multiple inputs which are captured as a single object. So it will not show you indiv independent values. It will just show you the complex value as the input. Just press OK to add it and you're done. Now you can stop recording and you can have the script with you. Now in order to just confirm that, if you remember in my checkpoint, I included the expected city as Paris, whereas now I'm telling him to select Portland. So let's run the script and have a look on the failure result as a part of our checkpoint. So now if you see and remember there are two checkpoints as a part of our script and we just want to make sure that how exactly the result will be displayed. In order to make it pass all you can do is you can just have uh, the you know, script as correct. You can just include the step which is required to be performed like Paris or Sydney or anything else which might be required to be captured and then you can make it pass. But as I'm trying with a different scenario, I'm just trying to make sure that it's a failure and right now I have a step which is failed here and that is of course the input on this. 
So I've got the Paris, which was expected and the actual was Portland and other options which we asked for were turned on and turned off and so many things. And that's one. The other one worked fine. So we don't have any steps for that. So that should be good enough to understand. Now let's continue with the output value here, how we can actually play with the output value. If you want, you can hold this or you can just even comment it for reducing your time as it might have some times to take and interact with the expected output. So let's go with the output of the text, which is again, just similar to a standard output value, uh, which is standard output value takes multiple properties of an object at the same time. We are this one that is text output value will be limited to one object, one property that is text. So again, you have to do is click on record button and go to text output value and select the object for which you want to retrieve the output value. For example, Portland, which is the from city press. OK. And it will ask you where do you want me to save this value rather than giving you the expected outcomes, because this is something which retrieves the runtime value from the application and stores in the data table. So click on modify if you really want to modify the name. So I can just say this as, okay, just name it as from city. So this is what you're customizing is the column name in the data table. And this sheet is where it will be pasted. Press OK and OK done. Again, it's not mandatory to change the name as far as you think you're comfortable enough to have those numbers. That should be fine. And ah, it's good time to stop recording now. And uh, you have the column here. So now it will be capturing the details from runtime. Let's click on run and uh, see the behavior. So right now again, I'm asking him to select Portland, but I'm trying to compare with Paris, which will be a failure. And it will also retrieve the runtime output value and store it in the data table. If you want to see, you can see at runtime, there will be a quick print here and it will just disappear. Okay. So it has just captured the value. And let me show you something very interesting about UFT. So now if I go to the results of this page, which says the failure, of course, it shows that your expectation was Paris, actual was Portland. But if I go to the data sheet, which is the test data and click on the default.xls, let's see what result we have got. Can you see this is not what I was expecting? It's something like, you know, i.irx.cr or hyphen CR, which is actually not my value or called as the Portland, right? Now, what exactly happened here is the text checkpoints or any other checkpoint which you have in UFD are specially meant for a web based application. The standard checkpoint is only the one which is used for other applications like window based application, desktop application or web based application. But when it comes to other checkpoints, which are equivalent to, uh, okay, I'm in the result right now. That's the reason I don't see the design tab. So I go to design. If I go to checkpoint, okay, I have to be in recording mode. It shows me the list of all the checkpoints. So this checkpoint, bitmap checkpoint, text area checkpoint, databases for databases, XML file content is external. So you see that text checkpoint and accessibility checkpoint and bitmap checkpoint. All these checkpoints are specially meant for the web based application. If you really want to verify any of the text, you need to use standard checkpoint. So this checkpoint will work well if you are working on a web based application, but not for the desktop. So you can definitely make use of standard checkpoint as a universal option and definitely have all your results being captured appropriately. And again, you remember in the previous tutorial, we have done this and you can definitely have a great confidence that yes, standard checkpoint is something which can be used for all these purposes. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team talking about the text checkpoint and text output value. I hope you had a good understanding of that. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.